expectations were that the final passage of the petroleum industry bill, which was achieved last week, would begin to put to rest many of the issues agitating the minds of the stakeholders in Nigeria's oil and gas industry. But with a week gone since the bill was passed, questions many are asking is why is there so much noise still going on? Currently, crude oil is obtained from eight states in Niger Delta region, which include Abia, Akwaibom, Bayelsa, Delta, Edo, Imo, Ondo, and River states. Based on sections nine of the PIB, at least 30% of the profit generated by the proposed Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited will go to the exploration of oil in frontier basins. Joining us now from Arise Abuja studio to analyze emerging issues in respect of this provision is Yabagi Sani, a former presidential candidate and petroleum engineer. Good to have you shed light on this issue. Uh, thank you very much for having me, uh, Deshwa. Okay, okay. Um, what, help us appreciate what could be the logic for this amount being dedicated to exploration of the frontier basins. Um, is there any anticipatory uh, cause to expect that oil will be proven to exist by the seismic test uh, at a time when the value of the Naira has dropped significantly? Is this what we should be ex you know, dedicating our, our Naira to? Yeah, well, uh, first of all, we have to understand the importance of uh, the industry itself, that is the oil and gas industry, to the rest of the economy. Uh, like we all know, it has uh, several backward and forward linkages with the other sectors of the economy, and it's very, very dominant. When you look at the, at the foreign exchange that we earn, which is about 90% you know, uh, from, from, from that sector, and uh, the total income uh, to the country is about 60% that the, the sector contributes. So when you look at all these things, uh, you will agree with me that it is not a sector that one can just uh, overlook, you know, when you are looking at how do you grow the economy of the country and how do you ensure that going forward we do not in any way get shortchanged, which is the reason why PIB itself is, was passed by the National Assembly, uh, which has been there for almost uh, over 20 years. The issue of uh, accountability, transparency, and good governance is at the base of why we are having the PIB. And more, important, more importantly, is for us to have our fiscal policies, policies right, because the fiscal policies we have today in this country, as far as oil and gas is concerned, is not competitive. And that's why investors are not coming in the droves that you would have expected them to come. Uh, we don't want to become like Venezuela that has a lot of uh, crude oil underground and uh, it's, it's of no benefit to them because oil itself, unless you monetize it, you know, it's of no use to you. So, and then looking at the fact that uh, in another 30 years or so, oil will not longer be a sought after source of energy as it is today. You know, uh, the developments are going on that will uh, bring other sources of energy to be more attractive in terms of environmental impact and also the cost effectiveness of such, you know, sources. That is why the issue of 30% that the National Assembly has recommended, that is the profit from the uh, N N Nigerian Petroleum Limited that will be uh, floated, it's, uh, it's in order because if you look at Nigeria, since ni before 1957, uh, there was a study carried out which, which shows that we have eight inland basins, these frontier basins, are now. eight of them are in this country. Today, only three are producing. And the three are the Niger Delta Basin, you have the Anambra Basin, uh, you have also the Dahomey Basin, which is in Lagos, and these ones are producing. The remaining five are in the north. None of them is producing as we speak today. So if you want to grow the economy in a manner that everybody will have uh, a, a stake in the economy, I think it makes sense to say, okay, let us grow the five remaining uh, business. Because if we don't, uh, like I said, uh, between now and 30 years, it will become a wasted uh, asset. That is why the National Assembly was very strongly behind that proposal that 30% should go to develop the remaining five business. And also, don't forget that we are a gas country, and most of these uh, reserves in gas are in these five basins. For instance, Bida Basin, which I'm very familiar with because I led a committee, a team that uh, analyzed, that uh, uh, investigated in the Bida Basin, and we discovered that it's about 20% or so oil and about 80% gas, and and the gas reserve there is is huge. Uh, you, if you if you remember, 
the Minister of State Petroleum, was it about a week or so ago, says that Nigeria has discovered another 260 trillion cubic feet of gas. And there's an indication that we can get up to 600 trillion you know, cubic feet of gas, which is huge. That means Nigeria will now become, care is not taken about the third country after Russia, Iran, and uh, perhaps Qatar. We will become the third most uh, largest gas reserve country, which is a good thing for, for our economy. Because that will position us as a very strong country that should be reckoned with when you discuss global economy. So this is why, I mean, uh, and I think the rest of the country should not play politics with this issue. Because we are talking about how do we engender peace. You know, when you have a situation where only one side of the country is producing over 90% of the revenue coming to the country, and the other, other side also has these same business and they are not developed, it doesn't uh, all go well for the unity, stability of the country. Perhaps that is what, in fact, has brought about so many uh, issues that shouldn't uh, disturb our, our unity as a nation. So my submission is that we should support that 30%. You know, it's not political. It is economic. It makes a lot of economic sense. Because if we don't, 30 years down the line, it will become a wasted asset. If we don't, we will not have the opportunity of making hay while the sun shines. And oil is very relevant today. We shouldn't lose sight of that. We shouldn't look at whether it's going to one side of the country or the other. Uh, I mean, if you look at it critically, the, the three basins that I told you that are now producing, which are, which are in the south, were, were developed you know, largely by the resources of the entire country at that time. When we had uh, 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 granules, cotton, cocoa, columbite, and things like that. Those were the resources that we used to develop, you know, the, the, the first well that we, was discovered in Olobri, okay. that 1957. Uh -huh. It was from that resources, which is natural resources. Well, so today, if we are taking 30% from what is come, it's okay. So, Mr. Sani, are you saying that the 17 southern governors who rose from that meeting in Lagos a couple of days ago and rejected this uh, decision are wrong? Are you also saying that the leader of the John Nation, elder statesman Edwin Clark, who describes it as fraudulent and provocative, are also wrong? If you consider that oil will soon be a stranded asset, should the focus not be shifting, as with some of the oil companies are doing, to renewable energy? And you talk about gas. What have we done with uh, the associated gas when it comes to oil production? Uh, we still continue to flare that. So uh, do you blame critics who say we haven't done much with gas? Yeah, well, we are talking about uh, uh, expansion horizontally and also vertically. And as a nation, we're talking about Nigeria as a nation now, not as just one side of the country. You know, I mean, sentiment is coming into this, politics is coming into this. And when you are, the, when you are discussing economic issues, you don't bring, you know, you don't weigh uh, economic, I mean, political issues on, on, the, on the main focus, you know. So otherwise, you lose sight of what will even benefit you yourself that is even objecting it. If perhaps, let take for instance, we're able to grow our oil and gas reserve to, I mean, the oil, the crude oil reserve to 40 billion barrels. You know what that will do? We will be able to export up to 4, 4 million barrels per day, even more than that, even not for the OPEC, OPEC quota. So that is huge, you know, to the country and to everybody in the country. Like we share now what comes from the, from Niger Delta. Of course, with due respect, you know, to uh, the elder statesman, uh, Edwin Clark, who says it's a fraudulent act. I don't think it's a fraudulent act because when we did it in 1960, it wasn't a fraudulent act. You know, the resources of the country was used to develop Niger Delta. That was not fraudulent then. It shouldn't be fraudulent now. It's an economic issue that we are discussing. And I think we should be nationalistic enough to, to understand why we should develop other, other side of the country. In fact, this oil is not a local thing. It's, uh, it's under still the, the uh, exclusive, exclusive list of the, of, the, uh, of the Constitution, which means it belongs to all of us. It doesn't mean because if you develop the Bida Basin or Sokoto Basin or Lake Chad Basin or, or the, or the Benue Trough, you know, it will be only Benue people or Bida people or something that would benefit. All of us will benefit like we are benefiting from the oil now. So there's nothing fraudulent here. And the, the, the submitting governors that, stood, that uh, came to Abuja to, to wait in, weigh in on their, on their representatives to reject the bill, I think they are misinformed. You know, they, and then they are very, very smart people. They know what they are talking about. And they should not politicize this issue. Otherwise, the North, North may even mistaken it as a, a kind of uh, uh, hate you know, for, the, for the growth of the North. 
And if you want to be able to uh, be seen as somebody who is uh, a Nigerian that has interest in all of us as Nigerians, you should support what is so important to the economy of this country, which has been passed by the National Assembly. And I think we should remove politics from this. You talk about flaring of the gas. That is squarely on the doorsteps of the people who are running the NNPC. They are, there's corruption there, you know. It's endemic. Otherwise, there is a law that says that if you flare gas, you have to pay certain penalties. Uh, but perhaps, you know, for some reasons, because of uh, the, which is the reasons why we're even having PIB, so that some of these things will become very, you know, uh, uh, effective and will, will be something that Nigeria will benefit from. Okay, Mr. Sani, I know you are at pains to keep saying we shouldn't politicize it, we should keep it squarely in the zone of economic yes. and, you know, national interest discussions. But some would say the horse has already bolted. Um, this is not the first time we're hearing about oil exploration in the north or that possibilities that oil has been found in the north. Some would ask, what has all that speculation yielded over the years? Why are we throwing more good money after bad? And also the fact that it is open to politicization in the sense that we're told these uh, basins are not known. And so you could have people balloting for these monies under the guise of exploration, and then the monies would vanish. As you say, corruption is endemic. So do you see the problems that are arising? Why don't we then... And, and also, additionally, just to throw this in, you mentioned that we're benefiting. But people have also called into question the benefits. A lot of the host communities are saying we're impoverished rather than benefited by this oil exploration. Should we not deal with that first? At, at, uh, you know, address the impoverishment of the, uh, the, con the, the segments that are yielding this oil rather than going into more areas uh, with more problems arising. No, I think, I think I'm speaking uh, against the background of the fact that we now have uh, a piece of legislation which I believe will solve most of these problems which we are having, that is of corruption. Because what has happened all along is that the, the whole industry was owned by the state. And anything that belongs to the state, like, it belongs to nobody. Because people take it for, for granted that, well, even if I steal and I'm able to settle, those who will come after me, they won't come after me. And that's what has been happening in any case. So, but with the PIB in place, I believe that what you are saying will not happen again. Or it will reduce the barest minimum. There's no country where you don't have some infractions in the operations of such a huge industry like oil and gas. But in our own case, the, 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 the corruption is order of the day as we have it today. So thank God we have a PIB today which has literally taken the whole sector of the economy which is very important to us into the, into the, into the uh, ter territory of effective management because it's for profit now. You are looking at profit, not uh, who is my, my godfather or who is this. No, it's, it's your survival now that you are going to uh, be watchdog. So, so I believe that the corruption you talk, ab you talk about, yes, it's there. And as you said about the, uh, fr the frontier basins in the north, why are we throwing money you know, at uh, you know, bad uh, something? No, it is not. It's because of the corruption. And like I said, I'm, asked, I'm, being, I'm supporting this move because of the PIB itself that will be in place, because that will take care of the loopholes that people have been you know, are taking advantage of, you know, and then deserving the, the, the country, uh, the, the badly needed you know, revenue. Look at where we are today. And you look at inflation, you look at the debt profile, you look at you know, the, 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 uh, the horrible situation of, of uh, the governance itself. You know, these are all because we are not managing that very important sector the way we should, we should manage it. I told you about the bad backward and forward linkages between oil and gas sector and other sectors of the economy that if we had managed that sector effectively, perhaps corruption you are talking about would have taken care of itself to a very large extent. So I believe in this PIB and I believe we should be nationalistic when we look at some of the uh, provisions that are in that PIB. They are not for any uh, side or sentiments. They are how we grow you know, our future, not even our, we ourselves, but even the future of, this, uh, of the generations that are coming so that they won't come and then find a wasted uh, asset laying underground which is of no use. So let us put our thinking cap on, the, for, remove that political cap, and let us see it the way it is, not uh, from the political point of view. Political prisms will not give you the right uh, solutions. And we, in Nigeria today, where we are, we need to think straight. We need to be nationalistic. We need to have the masses at heart. Not only the masses today, but those ones coming after us. So this is why PIB 30% is okay, you know. Okay, uh, let me ask you, because the National Assembly and, the, well, the federal lawmakers uh, did say that they went through extensive deliberations with experts to come about uh, these decisions taken. 
and you did mention that you were you had you know been part of this at some level can you confirm to us if these frontier basins have commercial oil in commercial quantity and to what extent are they Well, we even have an association that we call Association of Petroleum Inland Basins, you know, uh, although you don't hear much about it, but it's there, meaning that people come together to sit and discuss and analyze and then find out how viable is this thing. The only reason why we even went into Bida Basin was to, to determine the commercial viability of the, the, the basin that we have there. AK Banda is huge in terms of gas. How and huge? today, the trend all over the world is gas. So all over, all over the world, believe you me, there are countries that are not even as uh, prospect, prospe uh, prospective like us, and they are discovering oil. You have technologies today that before, maybe 20 years ago, you may say, no, this one, we can't bring it out. But today we have technologies that can, that can make it uh, uh, viable. So this is what we are saying. And, and the time is now. That's what I'm telling you. It's not political. You yeah, know, Mr. you make it what the sunshine. Clarify, we are all aware of... Just to clarify, uh, we're yes. talking about oil exploration here, but you discovered gas. I'm asking, did yes. you find oil in commercial quantity in this frontier basins, which 30% of the profit from NNPCL will be devoted to its exploration, which some people have said is a wide goose chase. Are there, is there oil in commercial quantity? I think that's what a lot of people want to know. I understand, but you must understand the uh, technicalities and then, you know, uh, of uh, exploring oil. Uh, Niger Delta, the prolific Niger Delta today, did you, do you know how, much, how long it took the British and ourselves before we, in 1957, we discovered that, that well? It took long, so many years. I'm telling you now that we have technologies that we don't have to spend that much time before we get the oil out of the ground. Be that basin, yes. When we took it to Germany, it was analyzed, you know, that at least it was 20%, you know, that is, uh, or 25% that is oil, and 75% is gas. So and this is an analysis from outside the country. So you can't interpret it to mean that somebody is trying to sell uh, something that is not. So the issue is that we are a very, very prosperous country. And the issue is that we must get it right when we are dealing with national issues like this. This is about the future. It's not about today. We're not talking about we that are living today. We're talking about the future. You know, when you talk about oil. And, and, uh, and uh, if we miss this opportunity, believe you me, it will be a tragedy, you know, that you can never quantify. So that's why some of us are calling on the government, calling on the governors all over the, all over the country, not only 17 governors, also the, the 19 governors in the north, should please rise to the occasion and see how we can ensure that these things succeed, you know, the 30% that have been allocated. And, and like you know, it's not coming from the state-owned organization anymore, you know, which was uh, run anyhow. You know, this is now profit that will be invested. And we have an arrangement also is in that bill as to how the money will be spent, who will be in custody of the money. Although that is also being contested, I don't have any problem with that. What I'm, what I'm interested in is to see that the, the whole country is developing at a faster pace than we are developing today. You know, like you have, you know, uh, the, these uh, issues coming up because we are not developing you know, equitably. We should develop equitably so that we, are, we respect each other, you know, uh, equitably. Okay, Mr. Yabagi, I, uh, just uh, briefly, I know you're aware that our debt service to revenue ratio is at 98%. So talking, uh, you know, as someone exactly. who is... About you know, 5.6 something trillion now. We need to naira. make the right decisions and we need to make them now or yesterday even. Some would argue that investing in an unknown yes. future is not as sound as investing in a known future. And to this I'm referring renewable energy. The future is renewable energy. Should we not, in the light of that, soberly That's consider right. directing more of that money towards uh, uh, renewable energies? Well, like, like you rightly say, renewable energy, uh, it's, uh, it has its own you know, gestation period and then uh, issues of... Uh, the, 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 the science is still, you know, uh, been uh, perfected. And I'm not saying we shouldn't look at that, you know, not, not by all means, no. But what I'm saying is that, like I keep saying, I'll repeat it, make hay while the sun shines. Oil is no longer an issue that you say you have to, you have to make researches and things like that, make it perfect. It's already there. What, is, what we need to do is to bring it out 
and then send it to those who need it, and then so that we can grow our economy while we still have it and it's relevant. So renewable energy, yes. Uh, other energy source, source, of, source of energy, yes, we should do it. Solar energy, water energy, whatever, uh, wind uh, mills and things like that. You know, we should go for all those things because of the environmental impact uh, negatively of the oil. But gas, gas will remain an dominant, uh, an, an dominant source of energy for a long time to come because uh, because of the friendly nature, you know, uh, environmental wise. So I know, yes, like you said, our debt profile is high. We are spending 97 percent of our revenue on servicing debt, which is bad. I don't, I don't think I'm happy about that. I think the government should rise to the, I mean, should wake up and then do the needful. That is ensure that we grow our economy so that we can we can be able to be on our own. Chase out these corruptions. That's why PIB, to me, it gladdens my heart a lot, you know. Well, Mr. Yabagi Nisani, thank you so much for coming on Newsday. We do appreciate your time here on the program.